Hello there. Today's tutorial is going to be about atlasing, which is the creation of a texture that is multiple parts of the texture all combined into one to lower the amount of materials on a avatar. I will also be going over something called a color mask, which you can use to add on top of the atlas and color areas without um, changing the skin color, for example, if you wanted to have the skin and the cloth atlas together in the same model. One of the first things I would suggest doing when you're about to atlas is get the model to pretty much the final state. Uh, so for example, eye tracking, visemes, everything is where I want it to be, and the final step is atlasing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new save, and I'm going to call it Before Atlas. That way I can go back to it in case I want to redo the atlas or change something. So I'm going to save that out. And then after I'm done atlasing, I'm going to make a new save so that I have two versions uh, for reference. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the body, uh, make sure everything's joined together using join meshes. And then you'll see under the circle that looks like a checkerboard, you'll notice that there's multiple materials for this model. Uh, I can click on those and expand them using this square here to see exactly what's in them. So this one is obviously the face. This one is the body. It's named left leg just because of translation. And then there's the right, the right sock, which is part, pretty much most of the clothing. And the bra shine is more of the clothing. Uh, it's best to try to get the atlas to be at most four materials total. So for example, for this model, what I could do uh, from the looks of it is I would take uh, the two, the highlight here and the emotions such as the stars in the eyes and the tears and the blush. I would click on, I would take both of those and make a single atlas of them. So what I'm gonna do is go to the material combiner tab now you'll get this tab uh, by installing cats as well as Material Combiner, which are in my Getting Started tutorial, which you can reference. But with that installed, it'll allow cats to have a, a tab called Atlas here under Optimization. Usually you would just hit Get Material List and it'll show you a list of all the materials that are on the project. Uh, before you do that, make sure to hit Combine Same Materials just to be absolutely sure that there's no materials on the project that are not uh, combined or extra because if you try to atlas with a texture that isn't actually part of the model anymore it will cause an error and uh, break the model so what we're going to do now is i'm going to deselect all and i'm going to select just the face and the left leg because those are the two that have skin so if i make a material in unity those will look exactly the same and I'll, they'll have the same shader and effect and everything because they're just the skin so I'm going to click Save Atlas 2. Now, this is using the Cats Atlas, uh, so it'll automatically do something called uh, quad, Quadratic, I believe, uh, and it um, puts the Atlas into a quadratic pattern. Uh, you can do that and just hit Create Atlas, or if you want, you can uh, remove this extra line here and hit Enter. And then when you hit Create Atlas, it'll, it'll I believe, default back to automatic, and it'll basically create the most uh, dense version of the uh, atlas without the most wasted space so if i click on this you'll see that it pretty much uh it does have a bit of wasted space but um it merged both the left and the right texture together now with those two textures combined it, it lowered the amount of materials on the project by a total of one because i only merged two so next i would click on these two dots and it, this will merge the right shine and the right sock texture which are both parts of the clothing which again would have and share the same um part of the outfit so like the socks and everything and they're most likely going to all use the same shader effect so i'm going to merge those together here but this time i'm going to use the material combiner to, to demonstrate that so uh in the material combiner and this is very important uh, before you start atlasing, um, I would recommend you go to the diffuse color. And unless you're using a model that the actual color of the texture 
is the way you want it because of the diffuse, uh, you're going to actually want to change the diffuse color to pure and absolute white. Uh, you can do that over here too by clicking on the material and then clicking here and dragging a whole way up. Or you can uncheck apply diffuse color on current material uh, because that'll prevent, even if I set this to purple, it will not actually make the texture purple. But if I have this applied and it's purple here, when I Atlas, it'll come out as per, uh, permanently purple. Uh, so I'm going to set this to white. And then I'm also going to go through and make sure everything else. You don't have to uncheck this if everything is white. So the best method, in my opinion, is to go to the tab on your right and just go through and check to make sure everything is set to white before you begin atlasing. And this goes, I believe the cat's version does not diffuse color unless it detects that the diffuse color is the only thing that is on the texture and there's actually no texture, just a material of a diffuse color. So in the material combiner tab, I'm going to actually hit continue now. And you're going to recognize that this menu looks exactly the same, except down here, it gives me a couple more options. So uh, I can actually change the image size to quadratic, power of two, etc., And that'll make sure that the way it combines it is based off of these certain patterns. You can also hit custom and you can go really, you can go really in depth and uh, make sure that like uh, each material and everything is merged in and comes out as a very specific way. But I usually use automatic and I personally uncheck compress combine image because I use the cr uh, crunch compression in Unity, which uh, kind of removes the purpose of it. But you can actually use compress combine image and it'll create a compressed um, indexed version of a PNG uh, from the file. So I'm going to uncheck that and hit combine while selecting automatic. And you'll recognize this window from before. However, under ads, because I have automatic, which is default, uh, will not be in that box. I'm going to hit create. And you'll notice on the side, now I have a, a skin one and a outfit one. I'm going to actually rename these two as we do this so that once I bring the material into Unity, it'll be more easy to tell what they are. So lastly, now that I've renamed those two, I'm going to finish off by taking the two transparent textures, which is the eyes and the uh, blush and stuff, and uh, selecting just those two and combining them the same exact way. What this will do is it'll give me a total of four materials on the project, which will make it so you can be within the good performance standard, which is uh, ideal. Um, the best way, and if you um, do not care about colorization and, and shader differences on all parts of your body, is you can actually go to this step and you could just straight up hit combine on everything, having everything checked and just make a giant single material for the entire model. And that is actually what I've done for this model in my world. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I am um, atlasing it more specifically for skin, outfit, hair, and uh, eye slash emotions. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this and switch over to Unity and then show you how to create a color mask so that you can uh, go and change the color on just specific parts of the body without it affecting other parts. Now that we've switched over to Unity, you're going to see that I have the three atlases that we created earlier. Um, two of them are atlases and one of them is actually just the hair texture because I did not need to make an atlas because it was already just one. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show you the crunch compression step of this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to select all four of those materials I brought in. I'm going to go over here, um, uncheck the generate mid maps, and that will lower the um, amount of information in the material. And then we're going to use crunch compression and keep it on normal quality and increase that up to 100%. Then I'm also going to change max size to the 8K possibility and hit apply. So it'll take a bit to crunch compress some of those textures. What it'll do is, for example, in this skin texture, there's a lot of empty space. So the crunch compression will just compress that all down and it'll kind of become obsolete. And the final textures will be much smaller than they were originally without much uh, information loss. So it looks like that is finished compressing. So I'm going to click on these. And you're going to see that just the cloth alone is 0.7 megabytes. Without it being compressed, however, it would probably be around 6 to maybe 12. 
which is part of why I did that. So it, when you switch to this avatar, it will load much, much quicker. So now I'm going to go and go to the materials. And I am using Cube Paradox for this tutorial because it has a feature called Color Mask. If you use other ones, such as Noe Noe, uh, you'll notice that there doesn't seem to be a color mask option, to my knowledge. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Cube Paradox. And I have it on cutout because it, it helps cut out the transparency on things such as the eyes and the blush. So the reason we want to create a color mask is because, for example, let's say on the clothing, we wanted to change this blue to any color. Here's the thing. If I use the red, it'll change the entire texture to red, the entire material to red. But we want that black and the steel area, maybe even the flower, to be exactly how they were before, but change everything else that was blue to red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the texture for that in Photoshop. You can use GIMP or other free image software, but I personally use Photoshop. So let me grab that texture, and I'm going to drag it in. So here are the two textures beside each other that we atlased earlier. And you'll see that there's blue over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a second layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my eyedropper tool, or my logic wand tool, to start grabbing the blue area. I can control how much tolerance that has. I'll just keep selecting until I've grabbed everything that's in the blue. I'm going to skip ahead until I've selected all the blue. So now that I've went ahead and selected all the blue area um, to the image here, I'm going to go to the layer I created. And I'm going to create solid black as my color. And I'm going to fill in all that area with solid black. Uh, so that'll get the trim down there, as well as the butterflies, etc. Uh, next, um, I'm going to, after cleaning up a couple more areas, I'm going to also make another layer here. And in that layer, I'm going to make it pure white. So the way that color mask works is if it's black or anything on a gradient towards white, it will color that area uh, based on the albedo color. Now, if it's pure white, it will not receive any color from the um, albedo, which is why it's called a color mask. So because I don't want anything in the white to change color, is uh, I keep it white, and I want this to change to red or blue or whatever color I switch to, and I, that's why I have it as solid black. So I'm going to now bring this over to Unity after cleaning up a couple of little spots that the eyedropper tool missed, and then I'll show you how the color mask works. So now that I've finished the color mask, it looks a lot like this. It's basically just solid white and solid black of the objects I want to color, being in black. And I also did the same compression stuff that I did earlier, and the texture went from 1.7 meg to only 100 KB because it only has two color colors to really worry about in the compression. So I'm going to go to the material for the outfit. I'm going to go to color mask, and I'm going to uh, find the color mask that I just created, and there should only be one, which is this one right here. And now that I have that selected, what you'll notice is when I change the color, it's only changing it on the areas that are in black in the texture. Now, you'll notice on the edge here it is a bit um, solid, and that's because in the texture what I could do is I can go through, and because uh, I eye dropped it instead of like painfully sitting there and texturing it out uh, but you could go in there and smooth that edge out but uh just for the demonstration purposes we're going to pay attention mostly to the uh, area up here and you can see that when no matter what color i change that to it's changing it just fine of course the base color is um blue so uh usually um when you change the texture, it will not be exactly solid red. It will actually get a tiny bit of the original color in there. Uh, but for the most part, this is actually coming out exactly how I wanted it because of the color mask. Uh, but the next step is you really can just go through. Uh, if I wanted to change your eyes, I would do the same thing. I would open Photoshop. I would pull in the eye texture, or in this case, the eye atlas. I'd, I'd select the eye in just black, make everything white, and pull that in, and boom, I can change your eye color without changing everything else. 
Uh, but that about covers it for the um, atlasing and color mask tutorial. I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, to help me uh, continue to make these, uh, I would appreciate you know just uh, you following me on Twitch. Uh, you can watch me live, create models, and you can ask me any questions you have. And uh, you can also follow me on Patreon, where at weekly I release models and downloads of um, models that you can um, edit and modify yourself. And I do release those publicly as well in my world, if you just like the version I create. Uh, but Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.